Why, hello. Yes, I do have a new hat. Thank you so much for noticing. It's called the Bonnet Barbara. Look it up. Who's ready for another unboxing? <gasps> Me. I am ready for an unboxing. I'm very excited for today's unboxing. Let's play how many times can I say the word unboxing before it stops sounding like a word. Unboxing, 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 unboxing. So, as ye who subscribe to me are aware, I am a Victorian hair artist, meaning I make artwork and jewelry out of hair, normally on a custom basis and normally out of my client's own sentimental hair of their loved one, which they send to me. The one caveat to that is the fact that I, myself, am not a jeweler. So if you were to say, order some hair work from me, I can put hair inside of jewelry. If you were to say, send me your own locket that you would like me to put a hair picture inside of, but I cannot make custom metal work. I do, of course, have a wonderful, wonderful jeweler who I work with who can give my clients a custom piece of metalwork, but as with any customized artwork from highly skilled artisans, it can be expensive. You would be then paying not only for my custom hair work, but the custom jewelry as well. So, depending on the aesthetic preferences and the budgetary restraints each of my clients have, we need to find some kind of workaround for the jewelry side of things. Whether that is working with my jeweler colleague, or if it is finding a blank piece of jewelry to work with. Today, I not only have a blank piece of jewelry to work with, but it is an antique in and of itself. I am very, very excited to show this to you and perhaps to use in a future custom order. So this is already in a very, very fun old little box. Henri Winterman's made in Holland says that little box. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Okay, let me show you what we are seeing here. So this is an antique brooch. However, if you flip it around, you see it is completely empty. Now, depending on one's own preferences. Sometimes the hair work can be the main feature of the jewelry, meaning that's the artistic uh, focal point that your eye is being drawn to, but some other people might prefer something a little more intimate, a little more secret, and that's where things like this come in. Beautiful, beautiful old brooch. Look at that. If we open up the pin, you see that there's still glass here. And that's the one very, very tricky thing that I always tell my clients if they're trying to find their own pre-made piece of jewelry or their own antique piece of jewelry that they would then like me to put hair work in because I am not in the business of changing or otherwise destroying old jewelry pieces. So if you send me a Victorian hair locket that already has hair in it and you want me to replace it with your own hair, I'm not going to do that. If you find a blank locket, I am more than happy to put new hair in it. And it's very important that it still has the glass <laughs> intact, whether it's a front-facing locket where the hair is the main focus or if it's something hidden in the back like this. Because occasionally you'll come across an antique piece of jewelry that doesn't have the glass. And I am always very, very wary of it because when I'm working with a client's sentimental hair, I wanna make sure that that hair is protected. I wanna make sure that 
it can be wearable for many years to come, and the best way to make sure that happens is if it is, in fact, under glass. So if you are, say, shopping for your own piece of antique or vintage jewelry, that's the one thing you need to know for putting hair work in it, is find something that does have glass, or at least plastic, something that can uh, go over top of the hair to conceal it, and that it opens. This one, I did need to check with the seller ahead of time to make sure that it does open like so, because some of these might just be completely glued shut or otherwise <laughs> uh, soldered shut, whatever someone did. If they weren't intending on putting anything in it, it might just be very, very hard to open. And being a jeweler myself, I don't like to <laughs> mess with anything that's gonna take too much, uh, shall we say, elbow grease to get into, if that makes sense. So, as always, the seller's information is in the description. This is a seller whom I have made many purchases from. You may have even seen me unbox things from them on this channel already, but I am just so, and this isn't even it, I have more to show you, so stay tuned. So we have this beautiful, beautiful brooch, wonderful, uh, sort of seed pearl right there in the center. Gorgeous, gorgeous design. And the reverse side has this slide that just pops right in there. So it would be very, very easy for something like this for me to be able to make some hair work to a client specification and pop it right in the back. And some clients just naturally being um, uh, drawn to the Victorian aesthetic with Victorian hair work, of course. Uh, I do find that many clients are trying to find older pieces. They can be tricky. I try to find them when I can myself. But the great thing about a piece like this as well, it does have a loop on the back where you could throw that on a chain and wear it as a necklace because brooches are not nearly as in fashion as they once were. If you're a brooch person, more power to you. I love me a good brooch, but if you'd rather wear it on a necklace, a lot of brooches were designed uh, back then to be able to do both of them. So keep an eye out there. If you want a necklace, maybe also look for brooches. So this, as I said, isn't all because we have ourselves a matching set of earrings which I just absolutely love because in the Victorian era, there were, of course, uh, many sets of jewelry. It was very fashionable to have sets that matched, whether it's a brooch and earrings or perhaps a necklace and a bracelet. And it's just always so special when you can find an, an old piece of jewelry that's still in its original set. Let's have a nice little look at all of those together. So you can have not only your sentimental piece of hair on that brooch or, ah! that was horrible, but this is a very durable piece of jewelry. We are fine, I promise. <laughs> Don't drop the antiques, Courtney. I promise I'm not actually uh, <laughs> clumsy. <laughs> I, I am very dexterous ordinarily. <laughs> So we have this absolutely beautiful, beautiful set of jewelry that I am just so very taken by any, any opportunity where I can find not only an old piece of jewelry, but one that has glass and is very easily openable and closable and was also a reasonable price. This was a very reasonably priced item. Uh, and you don't always get that either. Sometimes old jewelry pieces can be quite expensive, sometimes as expensive as it would be to make custom jewelry today. So it all just depends on the seller, what the seller was able to get it for, and of course what you're willing to pay for it as the consumer. Supply and demand, baby. So I have gotten a lot of questions lately because at the time, if you are not aware, my custom order is, form is currently closed. So right at this very moment, I am not taking new orders. That is purely because there was a time when I got absolutely inundated with many orders all at once, and I was getting very nervous about finishing them all in a timely manner. And some of the last few that I took 
uh, did take a very long time to finish because of all the orders that I had to do before them. However, I am getting close to being able to reopen that form. I've gotten lots of questions about it. If you are someone who is interested in placing an order, I will put a link in the description box to my mailing list. I have promised everyone who is on my mailing list that they will know first when I open my custom order form again. So that means before I announce it on social media, before I open my custom order form on my website publicly, my mailing list will get first dibs. So as much as I love this piece for myself, I think this is going to be one that I will offer as a custom order option. So if you are interested in having a nice little piece like this with your own sentimental hair in it, keep an eye out, subscribe to that list, and you might just get your opportunity. And if this particular piece is into your aesthetic, if you're looking for that one specific piece, I hope some of the advice uh, that I gave for finding those uh, pieces in this video help. And of course, explore a lot of antiques dealers. Check out the one uh, in the description box. Check out my other unboxing videos. See the other sellers because every seller I have discussed so far on this channel, I absolutely have had wonderful experiences with, so definitely recommend each and every one of them. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, what are you doing? Go ahead and subscribe. You made it this far into a video. <laughs> Clearly something struck a chord, so please subscribe. Click that notification bell. It is very important, otherwise you might not know when I upload new videos. In the year 2021, I am going to try to keep up this pace of at least one video every single week, and I would love it if you are here with me on that journey. And on that note, I would love, I would love, I would love and like, I would live <laughs> to give a very, very special thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. Here are their names. I love them all so very much. And if you want to join this lovely list of people, please feel free to head on over to patreon.com slash neverforgotten, where you can join this iconic list of people and you can also get extra videos, extra content, extra blogs, all sorts of fun things over there. So I'm absolutely delighted by this little purchase. I can't wait to see what lucky person is going to commission me to make something out of their own sentimental hair. So until next time, thank you guys so much for being here and I will see you then.